Um, yesterday, the, um, to make a teaching moment of what happened yesterday morning, which we've had quite a bit of clamor um, on um, YouTube, which doesn't mean anything because most of the YouTubers are retarded. So it means nothing. But what it does mean is um, political correctness and common consensus is common because most people are, you know, for all the reasons we've talked about. But uh, there was a, um, a contingent of the uh, people that watch the YouTube, which is very small because my following is not big because I'm so far outside the norm, that think I should have beat that guy to death yesterday morning. instead of calling the police. Now, now when, just think about that. Black, yellow, and I, and I always try to figure out who are the black guys, who are the Asian guys or gals, who are the uh, whatever that make these comments because they have, you know, the picture is there, not necessarily theirs. And uh, the name that they use is probably not theirs. For all the goody two-shoes out there, does that mean only neo-Nazi right-wing psychopaths watch me? Possibly. Well, then what does that say about you? And I mean, uh, there's maybe one, man, one and a half real men in this whole fucking room. Maybe. One and a half. If you put all your testosterone or the lack thereof together. So, um, but, um, so uh, it's like I'm uh, Mussolini at the beginning of my fascist career and they're, they're rallying around me now. And, uh, and yet, I didn't even think it was uh, anything that happened yesterday, but it's very much how when I say, run towards the gunfire and kill everybody, I take action. Just as I took action in Florida, and it's just, a, just like I've taken action all my life. And people like me, that's what you do. And if it wasn't on camera, there probably would have been a different scenario. But I didn't even think about it when they were filming me when that happened. That's my default. That's my default. Just as when I, when I pointed out to you that... Um, a majority of the people in the snowflake test, which 95% of the, the thousands that have taken the test are I mean, super snowflakes, uh, uh, and somebody spit in your wife or your girlfriend's face, what would you do about it? And, well, I'd ascertain um, what kind of day he was having. And under any set of circumstances, I can't even relate to that answer. I mean, I just can't. Now, some of you say you can't, but if they spit in your face, in your girlfriend's face. Now, for some of you, if they spit in your mama's face, that's what I should have put in the test, but I didn't think of that. Because some of you um, are more inclined to come to the defense of your mama, even though she fucked you all up, and you should have rolled down the inside of her leg. But guys are more inclined to come to the defense of their mama. Well, then, remind me about changing the test now, now that I've thought about that. Um, but some of you still, not necessarily you real men in here, uh, but out on the, uh, in the YouTube world, still wouldn't do anything. And so that's so far akin to uh, my thought process, it's, it's, I can't even, I can't compute it under any set of circumstances. But that's where we are in the world. That's where we are, and that's why it's so fucking easy for you when you go out there with this. There's no competition. I brought in some props. There is nobody that's gonna have this. 100% guarantee. You're not gonna to have to come up against this in any of your Endeavor's meetings. I guarantee it. Unless you're coming at me. But 100%, I can also guarantee 100% that you're not gonna come up against anything like this. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Yet, your weekly reports, you'll make it sound like you're, you're, you're attacking the Maginot Line or the Battle of the Somme in World War I. You'll make it sound like you're in hand-to-hand -hand combat in, in, uh, in Cambodia, you know? And I assure you, 
You're not, no, no, none of you are going to see combat doing this. But the tools you have, it'll be like you have these tools, and they have no tools. And to make it even better for you, their hands are tied behind their back. At least you should get hurt or anything, you know? That's the difference with what the tools, when I said the first day, you're going to be able to play all the instruments of the financial orchestra for the first time as the conductor. And we'll take a little of that, I'll take a little of that. Last night, uh, you saw what? Signs of fear. Fear. What's the bottom uh, Pass in your homework, please. What's the bottom line for fear? Absolutely. It's supposed to keep us safe. It fucks us. Yeah. It's, it's what kept us alive back 40,000 years ago when we were running away, away from the uh, saber-toothed tigers. But um, now, um, it used to be a flight or fight mode. Now, unfortunately, virtually everybody's in the um, flight mode instead of fight mode. And I'm not promoting that you fight people and do all this stuff, but on a physical basis, but I am promoting 100% that you do it on a mental, verbal basis, and that's when we were talking about tacit approval, how you give tacit approval to people, that you know are just talking bullshit, but you just listen either for because you don't want to be confrontational, uh, uh, and or uh, uh, a number of you um, have, uh, uh, not just here, but have come through the seminar since President Trump got elected, you just kept your mouth shut even if you're pro-Trump because you didn't want to get confrontation with the people that you work with. Uh, in some cases, you might even get fired. Uh, in some cases, um, you certainly wouldn't get promoted. And in some cases, you'd just be simply ostracized. Well, let's start with the ostracized part. So what? Why are you concerned about being ostracized? For the reasons we've already talked about for three days, okay? You want to be liked, you want to be this, you want to fit in, etc., etc. Now, so far, the uh, icons that we've talked about didn't want to fit in, didn't, all these things. So this is an exaggeration. You more or less have the opposite traits of the icons we've talked about so far, generally speaking. You have the opposite traits. You're the antithesis. Ergo, they're icons that have changed the world, and you're not. I just, this, I mean, all the groups for 25 years. And so slowly but surely, uh, more quickly for some of you than others, you're coming to the realization why you are where you are. And now you're going to be going out there like if you had a baseball bat and a big knife, and you're going to be offering them an opportunity they can't refuse, very much like in the mafia, except you're not putting a gun to their head or a gun to their you know, wife's head. Because there's no reason, if it's a motivated person, a motivated seller, that they won't accept your deal. If, if you explain it right, as they say, if you explain it right. And again, the templates, et cetera, are the words that work. The words that work. There's short templates and there's long templates. Josh said yesterday he, he favors the short. There's other kids that are superstars, Hall of Famers, that uh, uh, favor the long. I'm a war and peace guy. I like to give as much information as I can. I mean, good, I mean, not bullshit. As much information as I can so I don't have to go back and handle objections. Because I like, I like to make my sales call one time. And you're already, uh, some of you have already heard on my second meeting, my third meeting, my fourth meeting, I'm a one-time closer i.e. when I sold real estate and I had a 94.5% close ratio, I didn't get a second chance at them. They either bought or they got off the hook. And so dating back to that, and as some of the girls from my 50th reunion would relate to my wife, uh, I was a one-time closer in that too. You know, it was one date. It was my way or the highway. And there was no flowers or candy or any bullshit coming. And, uh, and I certainly wasn't saying, no, I'll love you in the morning. You know, uh, th that wasn't me. And that, you know, that's my personality. And taking action is my personality. Um, what else about fear? You can be trying to fear anything. 
the um, one of the reasons that um, the um, the programs uh, uh, like the special forces and the United States and for the uh, British and for the uh, uh, Israeli and the very and, and the Russians, uh, they train, 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 train. As I said the first day, they, tr they we train so we we um, we sweat and practice so we don't bleed when we're out there. And uh, they overtrain. Or I don't know. Overtrain is not the right word. Just like the astronauts. The astronauts train for years and years and years before they go up for every contingency, for every single possibility. And some of the possibilities are one in a trillion, but they still train for them. Practice, practice, practice. The people that are, are doing the most, and, and Josh alluded to it himself, he practices. Um, it's very easy to get sloppy uh, after you've done a bunch of deals. I practice between one and one and a half hours for this seminar, for every hour before the seminar. So I, I, I had in about 70, 80 hours and the seminar is 50 hours long, 70, 75, 80 hours that I practice. And I, I know what's on slide 1158. And then, you know, sometimes I skip 20, 30 slides, and I, I did skip because we had already gone over this stuff last night when I was working. Um, and the, uh, and because we're going to talk about goals now, and, uh, and um, if you don't see your vision, uh, Bill Gates, I'm told, although I never asked him, he saw a computer in every house. Okay, and I told you yesterday, he now wishes he said he put two, two computers in every house, and most houses do have two, right? Some have three, four, five. Uh, and then he said, I should have said a computer in every house, I said, on the, in, in, in the, on the entire planet. But they all practice. There, there's a slide coming up showing Hitler practice, practicing. When he was practicing uh, before he uh, became chancellor uh, uh, in 1933, I think it was, maybe 32, uh, he had over a million pictures taken of him, a million, in the right pose, the right this, the right hand gesture, gesture, the right, so he could be more effective. He studied great speakers before him. And, and arguably, uh, Mr. Hitler, even though he was an asshole, uh, he was one, one of the great orators of all time. One of the great orators of all time. What else about the, the, the move of fear? It's contagious. Yeah, well, I mean, it's contagious all the time. I mean, uh, and that's why uh, when I made the analogy yesterday or the day before, and the little guy in World War One, the little officer with his whistle and a swagger stick and a, and, and a, and a pistol, and he's telling the guys to, to go, you know, over the top. If he had stood in the bottom of the ditch trench and he say, "Okay, my lads." Next one, next one. It's not likely too many of the lads would be going over the top. And so, and uh, the, I, I make fun of the Scots. Uh, you know, you can't kill many people with a bagpipe. And they're the front of the charge in the, the, a lot of these battles from Crimea through World War II with a bagpipe. <laughs> no weapons. Now, 17% of war dead since Crimean War for Britain are Scots. They only represent four and a half percent of the, uh, the bodies or the people that were in the military, British military, yet 17 percent of the dead are Scottish. And uh, it dates back, they say, uh, the warrior blood from the Picts and the Vikings and yada, 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 yada. And I just, I just think a lot of Scots have a death wish, but that, you know, uh, and uh, they, they could, 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 and I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from the war dead. Please believe me, I'm the last one to ever do that. But uh, you know, it's uh, you come from a poor family, and you're a coal miner, and you're third or fourth generation coal miner, working the pits here. You know, it's a glorious end. It's a glorious end. It's better than dying from uh, tuberculosis, emphysema, you know, coughing up blood because you've been sucking up coal fumes for 40 years. Okay, you saw something else other than fear. What was the other one? Super success. And? Super success is also contagious, i.e. your dream team. They're going to talk about things that you've never experienced. And again, if you, uh, uh, the, the, the other reason why you're not bringing your family, your mates, 
Because you've already heard those stories. And they didn't resonate on you, did they? So if you got one or two successful, super high performance per individuals in your family, they didn't do much fucking good on you, did they? So how are they going to do good now? Well, I understand the benchmarks now, Mr. Pena. That's horse shit. You, and I will see immediately when you're picking people for your dream team that are close to a comfort zone. That are close to a comfort zone. And you'll even pick people way within your comfort zone, not even at the outer edges. So you all look and sound like... Super success is contagious. And I've been blessed to be exposed in a good way to many of those people on that wall. Um, and it rubbed off. Now, when I started doing that when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I had no idea about what, what I'm trying to relate now. I just knew I didn't want to be where I was. That I knew. Because I didn't see anybody other than I loved all my family, but I didn't see anybody worth a shit on a worldwide stand, uh, uh, platform. And the military gave me when I you know, was exposed to admirals and generals and ambassadors and that kind of thing, um, a, uh, it, was, it was something that I had never experienced. I had experienced rough and tumble cops uh, that my, were my dad's colleagues. Um, and it, it, it's changed me, it changed me forever. I saw, I saw how they dressed. Um, the, um, it's, you know, it, it was quite remarkable. Any other, um, anything else about um, success? We had, saw greed too, didn't you? And what about greed? I think greed is good, just like Gordon Gecko. Greed is good. It's what you do with the money. But the reporter was casting a negative light on some of the greed in sure. the yeah, yeah. And what about, uh, did you see the fear one when the uh, Mexican comes, is that a, a couple days ago, or last night? The Mexican comes out, and the couple's there, yeah? And, he, and they go through the process of what they're thinking, etc. I know what 95 to 99.9% .9 of the, the 25 years, what the class, the class would do. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to, I know what I do, and I know what 95 once in a while, we get somebody that would do something aggressive, but normally, and then, because they normally, even some of the aggressive guys, well, it's not worth it, you know, if you got lucky and you stabbed me and this and that, and they, they come up with all kind of rationale bullshit. Yeah, but you could get run over by a car, too, you cunt. You know, more chance of uh, uh, you uh, being drunk and you step in front of a bus, you know, and uh, how do you explain that away? Stupidity. I'd rather die with a knife in my chest because I was trying to protect my girlfriend. It's a different way of thinking. And that's why 95, over 95% of the people that take the test, we've got two or three of you in here that are right on the borderline of uh, uh, having a pair. On the borderline, having a pair. Um, the, um, and, and it's quite remarkable. It's quite remarkable. When I ask my at the uh, funeral that I went to, I went to a two-day funeral. I'd never been to a two-day funeral before. I didn't know they had two-day funerals. But the woman wanted to be buried at sea, and so that was another day, and, and they should have never done that because a lot of people got sick, and it was just it was an ugly deal. And um, the, um, um, just continue a little bit, Kat. So at that, at that two-day funeral, when I asked some of the guys that I've known 50, 60 years, the snowflake test, they just answer the questions. And these are old men, as my age, old men. One of them on a cane, you know, and they answer the questions the way they're supposed to be answered. Then they didn't think about it. Well, fuck, I, you know, even if I hit him with my cane and I ran my cane down his throat till I broke his fucking spine. Now, these are old gits, way past their prime. Didn't even second thought to him. Okay, uh, thank you for all the response. No, I didn't beat the guy to death, but thanks for uh, caring about my, my safety. Okay, 